Welcome back to the Doper Show. You won't get sick. If I'm Spencer and this is Sasha. I've spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got quite a few stories about the crazy stuff that actually happened when I was in federal prison. And God forbid you end up in prison, you want to make some of the same mistakes I made. Is that word? Uh, DP, I think it's disciplinary punishment. But, you know, um, I, I never heard that until I got out, just like a whole lot of other terminology, you know. It's, uh, you know, it's basically, I mean, that's what it means, but I just never heard some of these terms, you know. I think some of the older generation, uh, just don't, they, they don't have, they don't have the same lingo as is what's going on now. But anyhow, how this basically happened, as many, many things happen, are from running up debts. This was an issue in which, in, in federal prison, specifically at the higher custody levels, you know, I wasn't in a USP or anything like that. I spent in one place, but, you know, I knew plenty of people that were, and they told me plenty of stories about this. But even in the place I was in at this medium security, it's still an issue. You've got, like, this hands-off policy from group to group. So, you know, you can't just go fight another gang member because he pissed you off or dis disrespected you or whatever. It, because if you just go do that, then you might just to kick off a whole gang or race war. And this is what's been told to me by many, and it's what I witnessed, you know, when certain people just took it upon themselves to go ahead and try to go ahead and get some justice. It, 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 it usually ended bad. Basically what happens is if you have an issue, let's say I have an issue with somebody, and I'm part of some group, I go to, and they do use the word shot caller in prison. When I first got to uh, Petersburg, even at the low, they had shot callers of different groups, you know, or whatever. But uh, I, I thought that was like just some guy who watched too much TV and he was being corny, but they actually do use that term shot caller, which is laughable to me. You know, it just seemed corny. But that's that's what it's called. That's what they call them. Um, so if I had an issue with somebody, it's a different, you know, race, it's a gang, whatever, I'd have to go to his shot caller and talk to him about it. And, you know, basically they see if they can come to some sort of an agreement to where, you know, something, there's some middle ground that's met. And if that can't be done, what happens is, you can you can ask for a one on one. They can they can deny they can refuse to give the shot clock or refuse to give you one. The person could say no, they don't want to fight it. There's a bunch of different reasons. But if you want a one on one, what a good bit of the time would happen was both shot callers way outside of a cell or a place you know that was known as the fighting place on the yard. Which outside at outdoor rec there was this little probably about twenty by a 15 foot structure that was a bathroom because they can't watch you go to the bathroom so it's just this little enclosure that has two walls then it's open in the back open this way but the guard up on the hill that sits in the truck with his binocular can't can't see what's up so people fighting there you know and they'll sit up there wait till it's done you know it'll be agreed uh weapons are allowed weapons aren't allowed you know it, it'll be rules and it'll be structured and once it's done it's done but in this particular case, there was a person who was a colossal screw-up. That was a colossal pest. His name was Michael. Michael, I believe, if I remember correctly, was from, I want to say he's like from New Mexico or somewhere. Um, he lived over here pretty much his whole life, but he was set to be deported because he, uh, if you have a green card or citizenship, you commit felonies, they can revoke that and send you back. There were a good number of people that were had green card or citizenship and you know they ended up in that federal prison they got sent back the worst one this is a little side note but charlie he was a sereno he was like 22 23 years old he got five years in federal prison on some sort of i believe you know uh firearms and drug charge he lived here since he was like one year old maybe not even he was an infant but he wasn't a citizen i don't believe or maybe a green i can't remember what it was he didn't know how to speak spanish and he was getting deported to Mexico. He's getting sent to Mexico, and he didn't know how to speak Spanish, not a bit. Never learned it either. You'd think if you was going to go back to Mexico, he was getting sent back there, you, you'd take a little time. To, you know, uh, they got a Spanish to English dictionary on the commissary. You'd think at least he would have bought him one of them and been studying up. But anyhow, this guy, Michael, Charlie was Charlie's young, but he was tough. I mean, it was a fighter. Michael wasn't nothing like that. Michael's skinny tattooed up down 
he had kind of a yellow tint to him, which I learned later was uh, because he had hepatitis C and he'd had it for a good long minute. He's probably in his early to early to mid thirties, but he talked like a teenager and had the immaturity of a teenager. Like he acted like a child. And uh, my silly was number two for the Pisces. He's basically number he's number one in the unit, but number two out of all the Pisces on the compound. So there, three hundred Pisces. Now, if you ask Pisces in there uh, if they're a gang, they'd say, "No, we're not a gang." And say Pisces mean countrymen or something like that. Uh, but basically, it's a gang for Mexicans, not in a gang. As soon as they show up, they make them go out on the rake yard. I third floor up, I could see everything on the rake. I had the one wall of the one unit. There were two units that were triangular shaped. One wall of each of those two units faced the yard. I was lucky enough that I had a third floor room that faced the yard because I could see everything that happened out there. Sometimes, you know, if you knew something was coming on, just looking at the window, I mean, it was like watching TV. I mean, it was more entertaining than TV sometimes. You knew something was happening, watch it unfold. Something past time. But anyhow, you'd see them get new guys out there and they'd make them show all their tattoos and if they're part of anything that does not fall under Serenio, uh and the Pisces don't like it, they got to go. And if they don't go, they are the they were at this place the most feared group of people that would do the worst. Okay? Now, another thing with these people, with the Pisces, they were the only group, and I don't agree with this, they did not allow one-on-ones. They have a uh, one jump, all jump policy. So like say there are five Pisces in the unit. One of the Pisces gets to fighting and you know, his brothers see it, see it happening. They've all got to go jump. Say three of them jump, you know, just say, let's say, let's say all but one jump, all, every, all but one helped the guy or all but two helped the guy even say two of them don't help him. Well, after that's resolved, they're going to have a meeting out in the yard. You're going to see 300 Mexicans standing around uh, and for hours sometimes. Uh, my silly Armando hated it because the guy who was above him, he, he could have been a chocolate. He, he didn't want to do it. He says too much trouble. And he said, you know, this guy would just go out there and talk about nothing. Some people about power just do stuff like that. But anyway, um, basically, the two people that did not jump to help their brother, they're going to be what he called on the front line. Now, in addition to getting, you know, I guess, you know, what they call a DP, you know, which they 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 beat up their body, basically. They had this big old, uh, big old Mexican fella, and there's handball courts. It's basically just a wall, just a uh, concrete wall. And at nighttime, the, the handball court wall served as a barrier so the truck that was up on the hill that overlooked the yard couldn't see what was going on behind the handball court. And where it's dark, it couldn't see as good either. You know, the cameras and everything. They'd have the person stand up against the wall, hands behind their head, and they had to take so many body shots, usually about 15 or 20 from this big old fella. If I'm just standing out in the open and somebody punches my body, that's one thing. But when my back is against a concrete wall, there's no give. It amplifies the force. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, rough. it's more rough. And that's what they'd have to happen. Now, in addition to that, the next time the Pisces have an issue, somebody doesn't want to check in, there's an issue like that, the person has to has to go beyond what they call the front line, which means he has to be on a crew of people that's going to jump that people out. And that's his punishment for not jumping the last time. Okay, so this Michael guy runs up debts. He's a drug addict. He does drugs like crazy, runs his mouth like crazy, he messes with punks behind the scenes. And, uh, yeah, he, he does everything wrong and the reason i ended up having to hear so much about him was because of my silly armand to be a number two for the pisces and the head of the pisces in our unit he's like i tell him michael pay your debts and he says i know i know i know he said but you never pay your debts and see because then people will come to them and they'll say listen we got an issue your boy he, he ain't paying his debts well guess what happens then the Pisces ain't going to have anybody put hands on Michael. So the Pisces, some people, they pay like a fee or something, you know, like a tax. They got that money. That's the tax money. That's what it's for. They'll take that tax money and they'll pay off his debt. So then nothing happens. That's what keeps the balance. Okay. Some people have too much of an ego, have too much of a temper. 
there was a guy in our building who was a crip that was a store man. Now, a store man is a person that loans stuff out. A lot of the time, store men are people uh, who don't have, not always, but a lot of the time it's people who don't have a whole lot of family sending them money. So what they do is they, they scrounge to make a few dollars and they get items from the commissary and they'll loan them out. Typically, it's two for three. Two, you, like say you borrow two honey buns. You owe three honey buns back. But that's not how they did it. Okay, that's, that's more of a jail thing. If you borrow two honey buns and they cost 80 cents a piece, that's $1.60. You owe $2.40 back. And they'll write you a list, and you got to go get that list from the store worth of that amount of money. So basically, it's a fifty percent markup. A lot of the good store men, though, that got the most business, that were the most popular in the building, usually only did twenty percent. So if you borrow five dollars, you owe six dollars back. Though they would have a whole lot of people coming to them. That's just how it was, you know. So the crib who's in this building, you know, he's. Michael's owed him this debt, and he keeps coming to him and stuff. You keep saying to him, Michael, this is like <laughs> laughing like stuff whenever like you're talking to him. It makes you feel like he ain't taking you seriously because you know he's full of it. You could tell when you're getting played, and he was just so bad at doing it. You could tell, man, this fool is lying to me. He's trying to play me, and he's laughing about it. Where a lot of these people come from the streets, you know, it's it's there's like screw the prison rules. You're personally disrespecting me. You're calling me a punk. I got an issue with that. You call me a punk. You're laughing in my face. You owe me money. I'm gonna smack you. You know well, what's wrong with you? You're not gonna pay me, but what what what's going on with it? Nah. And they're not gonna go through the proper procedures and the proper channels to do these things. And that is where we have a problem. Now, Michael, I want to say you've been all kinds of active today. You need attention. Yeah. He did this. Michael probably about five foot nine. 150 pounds and not even in shape at that. This other guy, this Crip, is about 165 pounds. He, he's a little bit shorter. He's probably 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, Said he boxed is what, you know, word was. And it looked like he probably did just watching him, you know, throw him up. You know, like people come up, like with their friends, you throw him up, see who's quickest, you know, throw, see who's got the quickest hand slap box, stuff like that. He looked like he boxed a little bit. And he, but at 165, he only got a 15-pound weight difference. But this guy was like, a little tank like he looked like you know a little swolled up dude okay and he's getting all kinds of mad at michael and you could see it building up i mean you know and but he's not making getting louder stuff but you can see the faces and stuff he's getting more and more fed up with him so ultimately what ends up happening one day is you know he ends up going to michael's room going inside talking to him and then he leaves out you heard a little bit. You heard the feet scooting. You know, you know when there's a fight, there's certain sounds. There's certain sounds. The main one is the screeching of your shoe, the sole of the shoe on concrete. When you hear that sound, you know a fight's going on. And he came out, went back to his room. Now the fight's over. Okay, the Pisces are required to jump during the fight. He went in his room. If it had been out in the open, they'd have been required to jump. But you know, this happened real quick. Got up out of there. And Michael was busted up, knots on his head and everything. Well, the fight's over now, but this was a very, very serious issue. The Pisces were the one group you did not do that to. They had more numbers than anybody. Nobody came close to the numbers they had, and they were the most serious. They literally executed a jumping off of the yard of five people. There was one other Mexican group that was allowed to walk, and they were called the Barachos. Now, the Barachos had this guy who was missing a thumb, and he kept slipping his cuffs in, in solitary, in, in little cages in the shoe, and he kept beating up uh, Pisces out there. So they said they all had to go, and they executed, they jumped five people off the yard at 5.30 p.m. at the exact same time, all in different locations. They jumped them off the yard, and they put five on one on each of them. I watched a couple of it at the window, just like I was saying. It's like watching TV. Now, it was known. They had a reputation for this. There was the other story I told about Marcos, the one they call Can't Get Right. He was slow, but he's the sweetest little guy ever. I mean, seriously, he 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 was eating people's trays they were putting up in the tray window. And, you know, um, with the used spoon that they'd eaten off of, he wasn't right in the head. His only crime, to my understanding, was he crossed the border for like the fifth time and or sixth time illegally, and they gave him five years for it. 
his roommate was doing some unspeakable stuff to him. Yeah, like that. The type of stories, you know, that is, is happened in prison stories. Well, we we figured out what was happening to him, you know, just from people you'd hear through the vent and everything else. 30 people jumped on that guy in the most horrific beating I've seen in my life to this day. Okay. They had to airbag that guy out of there. He, he broke just about, I'd say he broke better than half of his ribs and the majority of his teeth were broken out of his head. His, his head went from a normal face to the size of a basketball in a minute. Okay. Like normally it takes time to swell up. I've watched his, his face change. I watched it like he got morphed into, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was one of the scariest things you ever see. Regardless of the guy deserved it, he did deserve it. But seeing something like that happen to somebody, yeah. So, Basically, they're known for you don't mess with them. Because if you mess with them, it, it's going to be business, okay? Now, you're another race. You're a gang member that went in the room and you put hands on a paisa. The one group, you know, it's like Wu-Tang Clan. Ain't nothing to mess with. Now, of course, they go to them. Armando's telling me everything about that. He's like, oh, man, he said... This is such a man. He said, and Michael, he says, it's all Michael's fault. He, he wasn't, you know, he said, he's like, it's kind of like, you know how you got that, you got like, let's say you got an idiot cousin or an idiot brother. You go to school, you hang out like locally, whatever. And you can whoop them, but nobody else can whoop them. Somebody else whoops them, they're going to have to fight you. You know, you, you they didn't know where you, yeah, you're going to whoop them, but nobody else can touch them. They touch them, they're going to have to deal with you. It's that type of thing. So he's like, ah, you know, talking about it. And so basically... You know, the Pisces go to the guy who was the main crypt, the shot caller for the big crypt, you know, for the crypts. Big old fella. Uh, I actually had to talk to him one time. I accidentally knocked somebody out. Uh, it, it wasn't a fight. I was trying to show him something. I don't think he believed it would work, you know, or I trained before I went in. It's something called a ridge hand. It's, uh, you know, and, and uh, I accidentally knocked him out. I thought I was going to get jumped or beat. <laughs> you know, I thought I thought I was going to get poked up with steel or something. So I, I met this guy before. But anyhow, they talked to him, and he said, don't worry. He says, I'll handle this. He said, is that acceptable? He says, is it acceptable that I handle it? They're like, yeah, you got to handle it, but you got you to do something, you know, that's you, you need to handle it appropriately because if you don't handle it appropriately and we don't feel like it was, you know, like it, this is – like what we're saying is being respected, you know, this is going to cause a war. He says, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. I'll handle it. He said, he should have never done that. He knew better than that. He knew better who he think he is doing stuff. I got this under control. And see, to be just straight up, you can be as gangster as you want to be, but you got to have common sense and you got to have a little bit of logic. And a lot of the time, the shot callers are the people there. There's somebody that's big or somebody that's strong or somebody that's mean or somebody that's tough or somebody that put steel in you if they have to or somebody will jump. But they're also somebody that's level-headed. If you got somebody that's a hothead that is not understanding that, okay, there's 300 Pisces and there's about 15 of us, they can wipe us out of this prison in a second, okay? And these guys don't play. If they, if they, put, five, if they put five people on one person, they, they got the numbers to put, uh, you know, they got numbers to put 10 people on each one of them. No, they got the numbers to put 20 people on each one of them if they wanted to. Basic math, okay? So, yeah, this could have ended up as all at war. That, that has happened before, where that has happened. But nobody wants that, okay? Your main job in prison is to get back out of prison to your family, okay? Your job isn't to save people. Your job isn't to do anything other than get back out of your family and not get more time. And certain things that you could do, certain situations you could end in, could, it, could get you another 10 years, could get you life. There was a guy at Petersburg that came from Fort Dix. It's funny, a men's prison called Fort Dix. They got a women's prison in uh, Virginia called Goochland. Couldn't make that up. And Petersburg, go figure. But anyhow, at Fort Dix, he pushed a guy down the stairs in an argument. Guy didn't make it. He got another 10 years. Yeah. So, I mean, stuff like that. He could have got life, you know, because he pushed down the stairs. He didn't mean to, you know, take him out. But anyhow, so what ultimately ends up happening for this was, you know, and Michael, even though he got whooped by that, even though he got whooped for not paying his debt and everything else. Now, first off, Pisces did pay. They did pay Michael's debt. Second off, he had to go out there and he had to get whooped up on. He had to get whooped up on that by <laughs> big fella. And there was a couple people that in a row sometimes you know they'll have a couple people in a row whoop on somebody and they usually do it for a set time limit okay 
And what basically, from what I remember happened with this crypt that had done that, uh, was basically five people got 30 seconds each to hit him in the body. And one at a time, okay, think about it. it untrained people usually wear out in about 30 seconds to a minute of swinging. If you have somebody for 30 seconds punching you as hard as they can in your stomach and ribs, then you switch them out. New guy, he's fresh. Got a fresh set of lungs, his arms aren't gassed down, any of that. Coming in, knocking you, okay? he, This guy, I didn't see this, but I heard about it. Basically, this guy, you know, the first person, he it sounded like he made it through the first person. The second person, he dropped down once. It made him get back up. The third person who's hitting him, he, he drops down. They keep pulling him back up. By the end of this, by it's like the fourth or fifth person, the story that I heard of happening, because it's... It, it, Prison's a big old gossip brain, believe that. I mean, ain't nothing else better to do but to hear what, what happened. And it's kind of like watching a living soap opera. So it is entertaining hearing this stuff. At the end of it, you need attention today, don't you? I love you. Now, in the fourth or fifth person that was doing this, it sounded like they were holding him up. Like physically holding him up. Had two people, one person on each arm. Holding him up off the ground. While he had a new person come in and beat his ribs to death, beat his stomach to death. Uh, they're not going to touch in the face because if you have marks on your face, they're going to go back on the cameras. And these cameras can read a name tag. These cameras, you know, way up high, can read a name tag on your shirt and read the number off of it. That's how good these cameras are. At the medium, at the low security, they didn't have any cameras anywhere. Made for a lot more fist fights, ironically. But the level of violence is higher at the medium. If there's any markings on somebody's face, they will sitting there and go through hours of camera see okay and they'll they'll backtrack it and find where he came from where he went to figure out where it happened they've gone through hours and hours of camera and figured out stuff that had happened where nobody talked it's it's amazing how how they will sit there and do that and there's a super team of police at petersburg and i'm gonna tell you why 40 percent of people there were chomos half people locals you know like man i'm from roanoke so i ended up in petersburg i was Judge sent me to Morgantown camp. I got sent to Petersburg low for my starting place, got in trouble, went to the medium. So half people are local, but then there are 40% chomos. Then there's a handful of gang dropout stuff, but there's a lot of you know other stuff too. Okay, but anyway, beside the point, um, I want to go to, oh, the, uh, had a whole lot of terrorists. The Iranian prisoner exchange, Ali Sabunji, uh, he got traded back for American sailors caught in Iranian waters. They got people like him there. They got people like Clarence Eugene Robinson. He popped uh, two uh, FBI agents that just by a chance encountered at a diner song. They lived. He got 20 years. He actually got out, got in trouble for selling drugs again. He actually gets out in two years. He's in his 80s. But he's like one of the biggest legends, living legends of Florida's underworld. He heard one of my TikTok videos. His family member played it for him on the phone in prison. It got him tickled to death, and he liked it. I'm excited, man. But anyway, these are some of like the baddest of the bad is my point. Sasha... <sighs> Make sure she doesn't knock this over. <laughs> but anyway, uh, some of the baddest of the bad, some of the worst of the worst, some of the scariest of the scary people. There were mafia guys in there. There were kingpins in there. Sean Pintard, on record, was charged with 1,000 kilos distribution of cocaine. And he was taking delivery of 500 kilos of cocaine every three months. And then it was a couple tons of weed that he was charged with. Okay, this guy was one of the biggest of the big... You know, people, distributors, you know, um, that there was. He was there. So with all these people there, they have a super team of police that monitor every phone call, every email, everything of certain inmates. <laughs> every one of mine was monitored. Uh, <laughs> they, they'd mess with you on that. SIS guy on the, would pass you on the yard and he'd say something from one of your phone calls to mess with you. And it would mess with you, hearing somebody knowing every word of every phone call you have and stuff. And you're like, man, God. But... So they don't they don't leave marks on the face. That's why you hit the body. You know, can't be seen, can't get in trouble. And you know, the body, you know, it you heal up most of the time. And usually the time people don't crack a rib. But anyway, this this guy who got beat up, he uh he didn't come out the cell for a few days. And when he did, he 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 was messed up for a long minute. He was messed up for a while, but he did not go to medical. He did not go to medical. He didn't uh didn't you know he sat there and he let himself heal up and michael man 
I, be, I wish I could say Michael had no more problems. Uh, that'd be a dang lie. Michael was doing... He, he, there are more things about Michael. You know, I was sitting there right looking at all the names. I write down a very person I knew in prison. I got to Michael and I was like, oh. Because, I mean, this guy... This guy makes my, my nerves bad just thinking about him. He was that big of a nuisance. And he's a thief, too. He'd steal stuff, too. That's a whole other set of stories. But anyway, if you like the video, press the like button. If not, that's 25 minutes and 23 seconds of your life, which you'll never get back. Last night, um, I was trying to upload the video to, to my second channel, and I live in a country area. Sometimes service goes out. It was having a hard time uploading. I'm going to get it uploaded today, but I do all my uploading from this one phone that I'm pointing at looking at right now okay so as soon as this uploads I'll get the video to the other channel uploaded plus another one I'm gonna try to get two uploaded to that one tonight I'll leave a uh, pinned comments uh, it'll be the top pinned comment again I apologize it didn't get up last night um, sometimes that happens so I'm getting a uh, one video on the other channel Spencer and Sasha uncensored it's a little circle with me like eh, with a couple knives in my hand one like a saw uh, and then Sasha, you see see her sitting there beside me. I'm wearing a hoodie, and I look like it's a stupid picture, but it's kind of funny. Uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll have the two other ones up on there. Sorry it wasn't up last night, but sometimes with <laughs> uploading, sometimes it gets uploaded. I'll have 30-minute video get uploaded in 20 minutes. On average, it takes a couple hours, and then sometimes it'll take six, seven, eight hours. I can't explain why. I don't know how to explain it is what it is. But anyway, I hope you liked the video.